कल और कुछ नई We live from New Delhi. You're watching DD India Live, India's voice to the world. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Coming up in the next 30 minutes. Counting in India's northeastern state of Mizoram today, a day after Bharatiya Janata Party registers huge win in Hindi Heartland, PM says hat trick has guaranteed the 2024 victory. Winter session of Indian Parliament begins today. Several important legislations, including those on central university and constitutional order, likely to be taken up. Coastal districts in India's Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and Odisha brace for heavy rain over the next two days as Cyclone Mijgong intensifies. Center in all three states rev up preparations. details now a day after bharatiya janata party registered decisive victory in three indian states vote counting will begin in the indian northeastern state of mizoram for 40 seats counting will take place in all 13 counting centers and 40 counting halls across the state with postal ballots being counted first followed by votes polled in evms mizoram assembly voting was held peacefully on november 7th with a voter turnout of over 80% recorded a total of 174 candidates including 18 female candidates were in the fray Meanwhile Sunday has been a big day for India's ruling party Bharatiya Janata Party as it marked a landslide victory in three key states out of the four that went to polls recently as India heads towards general elections next year state election results are of utmost importance Meanwhile the incumbent chief minister of Indian state of Rajasthan Ashok Gehlot resigned from his post after the results as the report <laughs> Elections have always been a festival in India, the largest democracy of the world. Sunday has been a much happening day as results of four state elections, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh and Telangana were declared. The results brought much cheers for BJP, the ruling party in India. Out of the four states, BJP is poised to make governments in the three, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. Let's begin with Madhya Pradesh. As per the data from India's poll body, the BJP has got a clear majority in Madhya Pradesh and is set to come back to power. The state's incumbent chief minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan has been in power for almost four consecutive terms. जो भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ने किया है, विकास को जनता का प्यार और आशीर्वाद मिला है। डबल इंजन की सरकार के काम Now moving to the northern state of Rajasthan, the land of royals. Reports suggest anti-incumbency was high in the state. The same reflected on the results announced on Sunday. People have ousted the ruling party Congress. BJP got a landslide victory in Rajasthan. BJP also emerged victorious in Chhattisgarh, defeating the incumbent Congress. BJP has attributed the party's big win to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who spearheaded the campaigns. ये जीत खास है क्योंकि मोदी जी पर विश्वास है। लोगों ने कह दिया देश में एक ही गारंटी पर विश्वास है, मोदी की गारंटी चलेगी। The state polls results carry much significance as India is heading towards a general election next year. Political pundits believe these results set the tone for the mega electoral battle of 2024. Abhishek Bose for DD India. And Congress crossed the majority mark in assembly elections in the southern state of Telangana, ousting two-term BRSS CM K C Rao. According to the Election Commission's data, the party has won 62 seats out of 119 seats and leading on two seats. The outgoing BRS secured victory on 36 seats and leading on three seats in the state. 
Well, after BJP's big win in three Indian states of Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan, PM Modi attended victory celebrations at BJP headquarters and thanked the voters. In his address, he also said that his hat-trick of victories is a guarantee for the 2024 hat-trick. India's tryst with democracy continues as the BJP is all set to form the government in the three Hindi heartland states of Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. This comes after the BJP decimated the Congress party by recording a thumping majority in all three states. BJP workers across India erupted in joy after the party's stunning victory. Greeting jubilant party workers and supporters, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi led a victory march at the BJP headquarters in the national capital, New Delhi. PM Modi also said that the hat-trick of victories in the state elections today guarantees a hat-trick in the 2024 Indian general election. <laughs> चौबीस की हैट्रिक की गारंटी दे दी है। पीएम मोदी कॉल्ड बीजेपी's victory historical and unprecedented। He further said that for him four castes are supreme and they are women, youth, farmers and the poor। हमारी नारी शक्ति, हमारी युवा शक्ति, हमारे किसान और हमारे गरीब परिवार इन चार जातियों को सशक्त करने से ही देश सशक्त होने वाला है। प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी आल्सो एक्सप्रेस्ड हिज ग्रैटिट्यूड टू द विमेन वोटर्स एंड सेड दैट विमेन बिलीव ओनली बीजेपी कैन प्रोवाइड गारंटी फॉर द सिक्योरिटी, सेफ्टी एंड डिग्निटी। आज हर बहन बेटी को साफ साफ लगता है। कि बीजेपी ही नारी गरिमा, नारी सम्मान, नारी सुरक्षा की सबसे बड़ी गारंटी है। नारी शक्ति का विकास बीजेपी के विकास मॉडल का एक महत्वपूर्ण स्तंभ भी है। Sunday's results come as a significant boost for Indian Prime Minister Modi who is already setting his sights on a record third term next year. Mihir Makri reporting for DD India. And moving on, the winter session of the Indian Parliament will commence from today and will continue till December 22nd. The government has 21 bills on its agenda for the session, including the bills to replace IPC, Indian Evidence Act and CRPC. Other bills like the Central University's Amendment Bill 2023 and the Advocates Amendment Bill 2023 will also be introduced in the lower house on the first day of the session. Apart from legislative work, the Ethics Committee reports into the allegations against Trinamool Congress MP Mohua Moitra for cash for query allegations in Parliament will also be presented in the lower house today. Varies in upper house, the post office bill 2023 has been listed for passing after discussion. And moving on, uh, the coastal districts in India's southern states brace for heavy rain over the next two days, with Cyclone Mikjom expected to make a landfall. At least 10 coastal districts along Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and Odisha will be affected by Cyclone Mikjom. The Indian Meteorological Department has issued a red alert ahead of extremely heavy rainfall over Chennai and few other districts of North Tamil Nadu and coastal Andhra Pradesh. The state government has declared a holiday for all colleges and has issued warnings to fishermen and general public to not venture out amid the approaching cyclone. Also, the National Disaster Response Team has deployed 21 teams in Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and Puducherry and eight additional teams have been kept in reserve. Rescue and relief teams of the Coast Guard, Army and Navy along with ships and aircraft have been kept on standby in view of the impending cyclone Big Jam in the Bay of Bengal. Reviewing preparedness measures of the central agencies and governments, the Cabinet Secretary stressed that all preventive and precautionary measures should be taken. And when it comes to talking about global climate challenges, air conditioners may not get the same attention as gas-guzzling cars or coal-fired power plants. 
but experts warn ACs and related emissions could account for as much as 0.5 degrees Celsius rise in global temperatures by the end of the century. And as Patrick Folk reports, it creates a conundrum for countries already grappling with surging mercury levels. <laughs> At the front is scenic Boat Quay with its waterfront restaurants and bars. Right behind is what in Singapore is known as Aircon Alley. And as businesses are buzzing by day and night, the aircons here are chugging away to chill things down. For many people in Singapore, cranking up the AC is the only way to beat the heat. It's too hot, it's humid, you need it to feel comfortable. Uh, it's really quite bad, so we try to stay indoors most of the time. And the beauty about this place is you see everything's being indoors. Right? You can walk from one place to another if it's uh, covered up and sheltered. But yeah, it's really quite bad, I feel. Uh, unless you're out at the beach, if not most of the time you will want to be indoors. But Singapore's love affair with air conditioning has it trapped in a vicious cycle. The warmer it gets, the more it's used. The more it gets used, the warmer it gets. The effects are twofold. Air conditioners use hydrofluorocarbons, which are harmful to the environment. They also use a large amount of electricity. According to the International Energy Agency, air cons and electric fans account for around 10% of global power consumption. Now, as a small nation, Singapore is a small contributor to global emissions, but the consequences of global warming are significant here. According to official data, Singapore has been warming up twice as fast as countries around the rest of the world over the last 60 years. But Singapore is taking a lead in tackling the problem and is arguably at the forefront of sustainable cooling solutions. At the heart of it is reviving the natural processes that cooled the land before urbanization. And what you see behind me here is one of many buildings in the city-state with a vertical green facade and foliage that acts as blinds to reduce the need for air conditioning. It's one of many examples of using urban design to address warming temperatures. Singapore's National Environmental Agency also banned the use of refrigerants a year ago and actively encourages people to use fans over air cons where possible. In many ways, Singapore is doing all of this because it needs to. The effects of global warming will hit the city-state hard. Patrick Falk in Singapore for DD India. Meanwhile, climate activists across Europe are calling on leaders meeting at COP28 to agree on firm commitments to cut fossil fuel use. From Berlin, DD India's Trent Murray reports. Across Germany, the colour orange has become a symbol of protest, synonymous with green causes. Climate activists from the group known as Last Generation creating headlines as they disrupt traffic, vandalise public monuments and get into heated exchanges with members of the public. It's leading to a national conversation about whether this type of action is helping or hindering the climate action cause. I think their actions are highly problematic as climate protection is the central challenge of this century. This group must be stopped now. In the end, they want a different society, the end of the market economy, the end of growth. They are making this a radical, niche issue and causing the centre of society to completely lose its understanding of what climate protection is all about. Fight for climate justice. Fight for but just a few hundred metres from the German parliament, protesters from the group gathered to coincide with COP28, making no apologies for their acts of civil disobedience. For me, this little um, blockades on streets on the rush hour is not a very problem for me. Because I'm a, I'm a bias, uh, I drive my bike uh, most of the time to work. We have to wake up and the climate 
is in an emergency status. Some critics would say, look, that type of action is maybe a hindrance. It doesn't help the cause. It just makes people angry. I mean, how do you respond to people that have that argument with you? If you are irritating people, uh, that's fine with me, because when you irritate people, then something is happening. There's not going to be a, a transformation uh, with people when they are comfortable. So uh, we have to be very annoying. Well, as the world meets in Dubai for COP28, many of the protesters here say they are simply not confident that there will be positive outcomes from that meeting for the climate change cause. They are instead saying it is the power of people and not politicians that will solve the climate crisis. But whether groups like these are bringing people with them remains up for debate. A recent poll revealing that the vast majority of Germans believe that last generation's actions go too far. The polls say we have four out of five Germans who say they don't like these kind of protests. On the other hand, if you ask them whether they think it's legitimate to engage in these kind of protests when you connect it to the climate crisis and to the inactiveness of the government, Half of Germans would say, yeah, it's legitimate. Everyone, everyone in our society needs to ask themselves the question, what am I doing right now? Do I, am I just a bystander or do I take action? Despite pushback, groups like these say they're not going anywhere and they continue to attract new members from a cross-section of society. Doctors, scientists, even religious groups. They all say they're fighting for the next generation. And they hope that as gas-guzzling countries gather in the Gulf, they will all agree to sing from the same song sheet when it comes to making the tough calls on cutting emissions. Trent Murray for DD India, Berlin. And now let's take a look at other stories from India making news today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be attending the Navy Day 2023 celebrations Sindhu Durga's district in state of Maharashtra. Prime Minister Modi will witness the operational demonstrations by Indian Navy's ship, submarines, aircraft and special forces and also unveil Shivaji Maharaj's statue. Global Technology Summit on Geopolitics of Technology is being held in New Delhi. India's External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar will be delivering the inaugural address on Geodigital Age on December 4th. The Global Technology Summit is India's flagship event focused on geotechnology. A massive fire broke out in Baramula district of Jammu and Kashmir where a furniture crafting factory and residential house were destroyed in the inferno in the Kanilbagh area. No casualties were reported. India has been re-elected to the International Maritime Organization Council with the highest tally at elections held at its assembly in London. The elections were for the 2024-25 biennium. India's re-election falls under the category of 10 states with the largest interest in international seaborne trade. And still to come on this edition of DD India Live. Israeli ground forces are pushing into southern Gaza after three days of heavy bombardment. Gold prices surges to the all-time high on weaker U.S. Fed rate cut bet. And India wins thriller to clinch series 4-1 against Australia. For decades and decades, downtown area of Srinagar has always been symbolic of unrest, turbulence, turmoil, disturbances, and everything that has to do with the disruption. I'm right now standing in the middle of the Jama Masjid market, and this is how weekday here looks like. Turnover. Turnover. Bilkul cash turnover. Band kya band? Eh, dukan? Ala chhu Bilkul thik hai. Bilkul thik hai. Kuch nahi hota hai. Kashmir to be nazir hai. Hira hai. Danga fasad to nahi hai. The making of the Naya Kashmir or New Kashmir.
Welcome back. You're watching Daily India Live. I'm Nipak Shikunan and moving on. The Israeli military announced on Sunday that it has killed a Hamas commander with an airstrike in Gaza. Israeli Defense Forces spokesperson Daniel Hagari said the commander named Haitham Khawajiri directed terrorists to carry out raids into southern Israel on the 7th of October in which 1,200 people were killed and more than 200 taken hostage. Kowajeri also led battles in the Shati area of Gaza in the past month. The Israeli army released a video which they say shows the strike that killed the Hamas terrorist. Also, Israel's military chief Harzi Halevi has said that Israel's operation in southern Gaza will match its earlier offensive against Hamas in the northern part of the Palestinian enclave. Israeli forces bombed white areas of the south of the Gaza Strip to neutralize terror group Hamas on Sunday. The Hamas terrorist group clashed with Israeli troops near the southern city of Khan Yunis. Residents said they could hear tank fire and feared a new Israeli ground offensive was building. The Israeli military had earlier ordered people to evacuate some areas in and near the city. Well, the Israeli Defense Forces on social media platform X have posted saying that the IDF troops eliminated 500 of the 800-plus exposed shafts to Hamas underground tunnels located near or inside kindergartens, schools, playgrounds and mosques. Releasing a video by the post, IDF further said that these places aren't child-proof, but rather teeming with terrorism. Every tunnel shaft and weapon idea finds is further proof of how Hamas deliberately uses the residents of Gaza for the terrorist agenda against Israelis. Also, Israeli ground forces are operating against Hamas in all of its Gaza Strip, as per Israeli Defense Forces spokesperson. Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari also said that forces are coming face to face with terrorists and killing them. While Hagari also clarified that ships that Yemen's Houthi movement claimed to have attacked in the Red Sea earlier in the day had no connection to the state of Israel. The IDF continues to extend its ground operation against Hamas centers in all of the Gaza Strip. In all of the Gaza Strip, where there is a Hamas center, the IDF is operating. The forces are fighting face to face with terrorists and killing them. And now news from around the world. A 26-year-old suspect who was arrested for murdering a German tourist in Paris on Saturday had pledged allegiance to Islamic State, according to the anti-terrorism prosecutor. The attack had been arrested later and was being investigated by the police for terror-related offenses. Chile's capital witnessed at the 12th edition of Christmas Paris Parade that marked 100 years anniversary of Walt Disney. People of all the ages were delighted and gathered in main avenues to get a glimpse of giant balloons depicting iconic Disney characters such as Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck and Olaf in the Paris Parade. U.S. President Joe Biden hosted actors and musicians for this year's Kennedy Center Awards at the White House on Sunday. Artists from different fields, including Billy Crystal, Barry Gibb, Rennie Fleming, Queen Latifah, and Dionne Warwick, were witnessed at the event. The Kennedy Center event honors stars from music, stage, and screen for their contribution to American culture. Over 350 musicians and singers brought an Andean twist to the U.S. rock band Foo Fighters' classic My Hero. At a free concert held on Sunday, musicians used traditional Peruvian instruments such as the charango, the quina, and the Peruvian cajon. And moving on, volatility spiked across many assets last week, producing notable breakouts in various segments, including the precious yellow metal gold. Spot gold, which hit season's high of 2,075 US dollars per ounce on Friday, touched a historic high during early morning trades in the global commodity market on Monday. It hit 2,148.61 dollars per ounce. The previous all-time high of 2,072.49 US dollars was scaled in 2020. Gold prices rallied to an all-time high on Friday after remarks from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell increased traders' confidence. The U.S. Central Bank has completed its monetary policy tightening and could out rates starting March. In the wake of the new high in the global market, 10 grams of 24-carat gold in India is now around 64,000 rupees. 
And in sports, host India won the 2020 International Cricket Series against Australia with a score of 4-1, winning the final match in Bengaluru on Sunday by six runs. India's Trish Ayer scored a half-century in fast bowlers Mukesh Kumar and Arshdeep Singh took a combined five wickets as the home side beat Australia by six runs in the final 2020 international match. Team India will travel to South Africa next for a multi-format series, including three T20s three one-day internationals and two tests, while Australia heads home for a three-test series against Pakistan. And Scotland will play Germany in the opening match of Euro 2024 after being drawn in the same group as the host. Euro 2020 finalist England will begin the campaign on 16th June against Serbia. The finals of Euro 2024 will take place on 14th of July in Berlin. The countdown to Euro 2024 has now truly started after the draw for the tournament mapped out the road to glory for the 24 nations set to compete in Germany for the honour of becoming European champions. Pre-tournament favourites France and England are on course for a semi-final clash in Dortmund if both nations top their respective group, while hosts Germany have been given a daunting part to the final. Julian Nagelsmann's team go into the tournament in a dismal run of form but could face a quarter-final clash against Spain or reigning champions Italy if they top Group A. The UEFA Euro 2024 group stage draw took place in Hamburg. Here, let's take a look at the groups of the Euro 2024 football tournament. Group A, Germany, Scotland, Hungary, Switzerland. Group B, Spain, Croatia, Italy, Albania. Group C, Slovenia, Denmark, Serbia, England. Group D, playoff winners A, Netherlands, Austria, France. Group E, Belgium, Slovakia, Romania, playoff winners B. Group F, Turkey, playoff winners C, Portugal, Czech Republic. The format will be the same as for Euro 2020. The top two teams in each of the six final tournament groups will proceed to the round of 16 along with the four best third place finishers. Sports Desk, DD India. Well, Team Hungary sailed their way into the history on Sunday, winning the grand final and claiming the inaugural SSL Gold Cup. Becoming the first nation to lift the trophy, the Hungarians got the better of Italy, Netherlands and Spain in the grand finale. This year, 56 nations completed in qualifying before 40 teams advanced to the Grand Canaria final series with five rounds of competition held over 23 days. Described as sailing Soccer World Cup, the tournament takes place every two years. Well, that's all for this edition of DD India Live. But let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. You can connect with us on Facebook, X, formerly known as Twitter and Instagram. We'll be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. I'm Lipak Shikrana from all of us here in Delhi. Thanks for watching DD India Live.